Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a smaller 10 by 7 inch painting of a chestnut sided warbler. Got photos of this guy at uh, Crane Creek in Ohio. And uh, with this one, I was trying to keep along with the theme of paintings I've been doing recently, where, which have soft, kind of multi layered backgrounds with kind of a misty feeling to them. And this one's a little unusual in that I did a face on view. I usually don't do a lot of paintings with that of the birds because they uh, it kind of flattens the beak out and can make them look uh, a little different and more unusual. So in this guy I uh, pre-wetted the paper after first getting off the bird and I wanted to have the paper evenly saturated so I went over it a bunch of times just with water. Once I was satisfied that it was evenly wet, I went about bringing in some pre-mixed washes. And with these, I wanted to have a gradation of both color, um, saturation, and uh, detail as I went down the page. So it was gonna be lightest at the top, and it was gonna have some of the more detail and darker greens um, by the side. To make it look more mottled, I brought in a number six brush and started bringing in some uh, other pigments as it sat on the page so they'd mix a little and have kind of a blurry background. And then I used that number six brush to start kind of faking in some foliage for the background. I wanted to have the background appear that it was receding back and losing detail, kind of losing focus as it went back. So. I wet some portions of the page and bring in some more color and then have other areas with crisp edges where I left the uh, sharper contrast between the new washes on the uh, dry background. And as things set up, I would hit it with the hair dryer just to set in the colors. When I was happy with the background, I removed the frisket and transferred the rest of the sketch onto the paper using a folding boat and tracing paper. And here I'm using, I think this is a number two brush at the moment. It's twos and fours that I use to just get in all the local colors for the rest of the uh, branches, the bird, and the leaves. And I was using some of the same colors that I used for the background. That's going to help it fade in. And I wanted to have some portions of this with crisp detail, and I wanted other areas where it was just a suggestion and a little less um, literal as it went back. As I did the background, I tried to keep in mind the colors of the bird, where it was a, would eventually be. And so it has this, uh, this chestnut-sided warbler, so he has kind of these beautiful orangey browns on the side. And in the actual picture, the branch was more grayish, but I chose to bring in some of those orangey browns to the branch to kind of have a little bit better color harmony. And compared to the source photos that I had for this guy, I ended up moving around a lot of the branches and things to have a little bit better flow across the page of movement with the branches behind it. Uh, in the actual photo, it had a, a fairly obvious branch right behind the bird going through its head. And When I did this, I didn't mind the motion of that, but I wanted to de-emphasize it, so I had that fade out in the background. One of the dangers with using frisket is that you have an obvious separation between the background and the foreground as you do these. So when I do the frisketed paintings, I usually try to try to have some middle ground where I have areas that are still crisp and then move out of focus as you go back. Um, otherwise, you tend to have just kind of one thing cut out and pasted on top of the other. And it doesn't always look right. 
you know, if you have a very plain background, that can look good. I think it usually looks better if you have middle ground, foreground, and uh, background kind of all working together, giving you a little bit more what I think is convincing depth. On this one, I was trying not to go super, super detailed on every last portion of the painting, which is kind of my tendency coming from an illustration background to kind of over-render things. So on this one, I was very consciously trying to keep my contrast controlled to where I needed it to contrast -y and let some other areas kind of fade off the page a little bit more. For example, the branch that's going off towards the top of the page, I wanted to have that have a lot less contrast for a couple of reasons. One, I think as a design element, I think if you had that going up and off the page and it had strong color, it would kind of pull your eye off the page. And by reducing that contrast, I think we get um, an element in there that's interesting and compositionally, but it isn't pulling your eye off the page. And it gives your eye a place to relax a little bit. You, know, you have some areas where you have kind of this feverish detail all over the place. and in other areas where your brain kind of fills in some of the detail for those other areas. In my photo reference, the feet were covered by some leaves and it looked kind of, it looked fine in the photo, but when I did the initial sketches from that one photo, it, it just kind of looked wrong. It looked like you were hiding the feet because you didn't want, want to paint them. So I uh, redrew some different feet on this guy to have it uh, not hidden. And I moved some of those clumps of leaves over to uh, kind of give him a different presence on the page. One of the things when you're painting a bird that's face on is they have a tendency to look like just a little sphere, which is cool because they look cute. But at the same time, you lose a lot of the cues that tell you what species the bird is. So with this guy, I really, it's those chestnut sides and that yellow cap. And, uh, you know, he had this really grumpy little expression on him. And it really took a while to get the rounding of the belly right. So it sat on the page and looked convincing within that environment. One of the things that's difficult with uh, painting birds is that they they kind of naturally hide well in their environment. Um, you get a counter shaded bird like this where it's dark on top, light on the bottom. Well, the shadows of the day kind of fill in those uh, those bottom values, and you if you paint it realistically, you have all these reflected greens coming up on the belly, and that looks right to your eye, but it it kind of hides the bird on the page so I'll often kind of lie to the viewer and I'll pitch those reflected colors a little bit differently so in this case I used blues when in actuality the whites of the belly were more kind of green gray colors and so by bringing in those blues you have a little bit of color pop and it separates it from the background perhaps a little unnaturally but it, I think it makes for a better painting and then by using some of those blues, I'll also introduce some of those into the shadows and the background so they kind of play together nicely. So typically, I, once I, you know, in this case, I sign the painting and then I find another hour's worth of things to do on it. You, that often happens. You think you're finished and then you realize, uh, no, not quite. And with this guy, I ended up doing a last wash to really round it out a little bit more because the belly didn't um, didn't quite round out as much as I wanted it to. So I did go back into it a, a day or two later and put another hour or so into it just to get it to where I needed it to be. And you can see the photo reference on the left um, where, where I was working from.
So there you go. That's a 10 by 7 inch painting of a chestnut sided warbler. Thanks for watching. If you have a chance, take a peek at the blog or subscribe.